Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Paul. Um, yeah, ten to five. So, what time are we? Uh, I'm not fine. Plenty of time. Okay. I was just thinking about speeding up a bit, you know. But um, okay. All right. Um, well, first of all, um, just welcome everybody to, uh, to 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 the presentation. Um, this really started off about four months ago, four, four or five months ago. I, I was down in Hook, which is our head office, and, um, and my boss just sort of collared me in the corridor and said. Um, all oh, right, um, Gary. Yeah, we, we, we're doing some stuff um, on the on the Access Network Power Initiative with um, with the SCTE across in, in the states. And um, would you mind uh, just having a look at this and, and helping out on it? You know, as soon as you've got nothing else better to do. So I thought, all right, then okay. And uh, from there, it, it's really sort of transformed into quite uh, quite a bit of activity um, and something that. When I initially looked at it, I didn't think it would uh, it turn out to um, the level of work that uh, that's been required just to get us this far. But equally, you know, what's still left to do, and, and there's still a, a hell of a lot to do. Um, so I just move on. So we've seen a lot of graphs and um, debates today around about you know traffic continuing to grow northbound in terms of. Um, you know, data that's been shifted on the network. We talked about billions of devices in terms of how they are now being connected to the network, and that's all heading in, in a northbound uh, direction as well. But of course, you know, regardless of whether that's core IP traffic or you know devices that are being connected to the access network, um, the last mile, as we all know, is still very important. And what of that then in terms of power on, on the access network? So one of the things that um, did surprise me, and I, and I was really surprised at this, um, the, uh, the SCT um, in the States with their MSO members did a, a survey to try and understand. So if, if we have all this power in, in the cable network, um, do we understand really where it's all consumed? And they came up with this, uh, this slide here. So at the top, you've got the data centers, which are national distribution centers, three to seven percent. Backbone and admin sites, one and ten and uh, ten to twenty-one percent. But then this massive number at the bottom, which is the access network um, and, and indeed edge facilities in there. So when I looked at that, I thought, blimey, that that is a huge number. That that really is. And um, for the first time, then it just really dawned on me in terms of how how big a task this uh, this is going to be. So as a result of that, um, Balan Nair, who's the, the CTO in, in, in Liberty Global, who, who of course um, own Virgin Media now, uh, along with John Chance, who's the, the CNO in Comcast, um, with the SCT, have, have, have pulled together and, and looked at this SCT 2020 program for, for the, uh, the cable industry. And really, this is what it's about. Um, there's about nine different areas of activity in there which, um, which they've set up working groups to really start to look at this um, as an industry and that includes MSOs and, and vendors as well in there and things like you know just how we how we decide to, to measure things in terms of power on the network specifically looking at the access network efficiency because it is such a, a big contributor to, uh, to power consumption looking at alternate energy options um, energy and operations, facility classification, how do you classify data centers? Um, how do you classify critical facilities? Um, what about density and consolidation in those data centers? How does all that work? Fleet optimization, yeah, truck rolls in the cable industry is a, is a big thing. Um, can we make that better? And also how we actually cool things down inside data centers, again, on, on the climate technology. But really, the, the, the program goals there, there's four of them there, like that we said there, is to, to try and reduce power consumption um, by 20% on a unit basis overall, um, energy cost redu reduction by 25%, grid dependency, that, that's an interesting one. You know, how can we move off the grid um, in terms of power consumption today and in the future? And then looking again at uh, how we optimize technical facilities um, and data centers. So, as you can see, you know, there's nine work streams there. Um, within Liberty Global now, um, 
I'm sort of heading up the, the access network efficiency uh, one, but there's another guy called Paul Carr in our organization um, in Virgin Media, and he's picking up a similar program, if you like, um, to this, but applicable to, uh, to Liberty Global. So there's a lot of interest in that. Um, there's a lot of effort gone into it thus far. Um, I think certainly from an access network efficiency perspective, that work stream itself could probably um, push on a little faster than it is at the moment. But you know, <clears throat> the problem I think we've got is that certainly at the moment, this is something that I'm trying to do as, as well as the rest of uh, my day job, which, uh, which is a bit of a challenge. Okay, so from a, an access network efficiency perspective, really what this is about then is just trying to develop standards and operational practices to, to look at you know, obtaining data from the network, providing a baseline for that in terms of power consumed, and, and look at the costs again associated with operating that, uh, not just in terms of outside plant, but, but the critical facilities as well. And there's just a few ideas in terms of what we're trying to do. Um, to, to, to get us to that position where we, we truly understand that. Now, I'm not saying for one minute that we don't understand what we're, we're spending or, or where our inventory is. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. We, we, we clearly do that because we, we do have bills to pay that right across not just Virgin Media, but certainly Liberty Global. Um, but again, it's about the, the accuracy of that information and are there opportunities in there that we can do something different to improve those uh, bills by reducing them, for example. One of the biggest challenges we've got then is to, so if you want to try and improve something, you know, how do you measure what you, you need to improve? And there's been lots of discussion, debate with the, with the guys across uh, the MSOs in, in the States on this, and uh, certainly within, within LGI, more so Virgin Media, to be honest, at the moment um, than the rest of LGI, but we are working with them and, and trying to get them involved in this. But really, it's about trying to set up some theoretical model um, and then measure that model against some, some real you know, use case studies. But what I think is important is that we, we've, we've also gone from a, an inside plant plus outside plant uh, and the in-home connections to give us this access power metrics. Because one of the thoughts were, well, <clears throat> surely it's just the outside plant that you're interested in. Well, it is to a point, but equally at the same time, um, if you're trying to compare this with for example, an EPON solution, then you still need to see the, um, the holistic end-to-end -end connectivity of that to give you that right comparison because, <coughs> excuse me, if you changed um, the HFC network to, a, say, an RFOG uh, solution, then your costs in terms of power consumption in, in the access network are reduced, of course they are, um, but you're then moving that additional power requirement back into the inside plant. So you've got to be careful in terms of how you measure that and how you pull all that together. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So one of the things we tried to do, and, and this is quite a busy slide, and I'm not going to go into all of it in detail for now, but what we tried to do is to say, look, in terms of connections within the inside plant, here are the key things that we believe are fundamental and relative to a, to a classic HFC network. That's inside the, uh, the, the blue box at the top left-hand corner. We then looked at the outside plant, and again, saying, look, in general, you know, if we were to model that, what would it look like? So optical nodes, PSU losses, power supply losses, I squared R losses on the cable, and then obviously the amplifiers as well. So that's the, the constituent parts, certainly from, a, from an outside plant perspective. And then finally, from, a, from an in-home perspective, the HDU, um, the set-top box, and, and the broadband gateway. And what we're trying to do here, then, is just to, to say, look, <clears throat> there's the end-to-end -end view of what we believe um, is, is the total power consumption from, a, from an end-to-end -end perspective. Um, there's still a bit more work to do on this, but the, the theory is such that if we can understand what that looks like, um, we can then go out and measure it. We can, we can, take, you know, we can take the boilerplate numbers that we've got for them um, and go out in the field and actually measure them and just compare and contrast that with and see what that looks like. Now, one of the challenges you've got from there is to say, right, so there's your HFC network. That's what it looks like. 
Um, I'll talk about the metrics in, in a bit more detail after this slide. Um, but what we've also done then is, is produced a similar model for RFOG, um, and we've looked at EPON as well. And we've also looked at, a, at an RFOG plus EPON um, connection as well. So we've got about four, four different varieties of network that we can baseline and just try and get a view on you know, what the power consumption looks like in there so that we can start to understand it um, and start to try and improve it. But one of the challenges you've got then is what do you actually measure? So from a, <clears throat> an access power metrics perspective, there's, there's two school of thoughts on this. There's, there's device level metrics, so these are the actual power supplies themselves, the active uh, efficiencies in the actives and the cable efficiencies, i.e. in terms of your I squared R losses. And also then the network level metrics. So these are your end-to-end -end view in terms of what's per homes passed, what's per subscriber, what's per planned kilometer. And then this idea of kilowatt hour per gigabit, you know, in terms of data throughput. Um, if we are wanting to compare data throughput with uh, other um, um, solutions, architectural solutions such as EPON, for example, you know, that is something that we'd need to consider as well. So this next set that we had underneath here was just an example that we, we looked at in, in Newcastle. And Mr. Drakefield sitting in the middle there was uh, my man on the ground there. So, um, but the, the, this is an indicative data set example. So you know, what I'm seeing here then is that this is, the, this is the process that we followed and these were the metrics that we were trying to, to arrive at. I think um, there's still some work to be done to refine them and to understand them in detail. But suffice to say, as a, as a start of a 10, you know, I was well pleased with, with what we got from that. And ideally from, from this, you know, it would be a case of looking at that as a, as a particular nodal area and then seeing if we can model that and, and just building that up across the footprint to give us a, an overall view, say, for example, in the, in the Tyneside franchise. Now, the reason for that is, is quite important um, because without this, without this baseline in terms of A, understanding you know, what you're trying to measure and B, then making sure that you are measuring it in the right way you know, at the right time, um, and consistently across the piece, that is really important. So that's something that we're continuing to work on. Um, there's some standards being created as we speak. There's some standards being created around how you actually go about measuring that. Um, you know, so that sounds quite uh, patronizing, but you know, believe me, um, once you start looking into it and making sure that you can define exactly what you want to measure and where, um, it does start getting quite complicated. So that's something that we're, we're, we're continuing to work on. Um, but at the end of it, you know, it gets back to this point here before, um, well, nice data, but what, what are you going to do about it and what are you going to do with it? I think for me, um, you know, there's been a lot of good discussion today around, around the access network in terms of you know, what do you do next? You know, do, you, do you go to 1.2 gigahertz? Do you look at um, 1.7? Do you look at deploying you know, PON as a, as a solution in the network? And I think for me, the biggest difference is, is, is this bit here. You know, in, in the past, perhaps, we might have been a bit guilty where we've never really uh, looked at this in, in great detail and really thought about it in a way where, you know, if we are looking to improve, um, you know, the network in terms of its capability, yeah, we can look at the technology, you know, whether it be Doctors 3.1, you know, EPON or whatever. Um, however, we've never really took that into consideration to... Um, to a level of detail that perhaps we should. So I think for me, you know, that, that in itself there, I think in Jan's uh, presentation this morning in terms of a, a TCO perspective, he, he measured, he, he mentioned, sorry, power, but he also talked about the other thing about maintenance, et cetera. That's fine. Um, but certainly for me, that is something that we can, uh, we can definitely look at. And the thing for me as well is, is that it's, it's probably just even in terms of nodal splits, you know, something as, as basic as a nodal split today, um, you know, nodal splits are happening on a, a regular basis um, throughout the, the cable world. Um, but do we actually look at the power um, in that situation? And, and, you know, there's times where you might think, well, okay, so sometimes the nodal splits are just done on purely on a capacity load balancing um, issue, but is there not an opportunity there at that point then to look at how the network is, um, is powered. You know, 
could you take out a larger power supply if it's not required? You know, because it's one of the, an older style and it, and it doesn't, it's not as efficient as it could be. Um, and could you replace it with a, a more efficient newer power supply? Um, but also, can you then you know, do a bit of redesign on the network at that point in time as well to make sure that you are addressing this, um, this issue here? But longer term, you know, I think the biggest benefit we, we will have from this, and, and we, we look at the, um, you know, these decision points that we talked about there. I mean, Justin mentioned before about um, you know, when should you deploy PON or, or do you continue with DOCSIS uh, 3.1 and when do you upgrade your spectrum? I think all of the longer term strategic economic decisions, um, this will help with. You know, um, the, the modeling that we're doing on this now, or starting to do, um, should help us get a more better informed position on technology choices as well and not just about power. So that's something that um, certainly for me, um, it, it's, it's been quite enlightening in terms of actually when you stand back and think about power, um, you, you start looking certainly in a different way when you start looking at what the possibilities are and, and what you can do to try and make things better, certainly in terms of, um, of, of the access network, um, which is a massive, a massive cost to, uh, to the business. Okay, so I've whistled through this pretty damn quick, um, but for me, just some key takeaways really for this then is just to highlight again that certainly from, a, from an, an, an access network perspective, 73% and 83% of that is, is power consumption, which is huge. Um, Liberty Global, you know, we're, we're starting to work more closely with our European colleagues now. Um, they have got some ambitious targets set for, for Energy 2020. Um, the working group that's set up with, uh, within Liberty Global, which I, I look after, it's all gambit and reasoning is to try and to look at ways to innovate solutions to, to improve that. But I think the key thing for me is this bit here, you know. Um, <clears throat> I work with the architecture guys, Matt, Matt Shepard, Phil Oakley um, in, in, in HFC Architecture. Again, you know, the decision points around what we do next in terms of technology. Yes, it, it is looked at from a technology perspective, but I think also now, you know, we can assist them with a view on that based on a, on a power view of the world as well. And the other thing is just this sort of call to arms for everybody in terms of, you know, both vendors and, um, and MSOs alike that um, <clears throat> certainly within the, uh, within the working group that's been set up within LGI, um, we'll continue to work together to, to collaborate and innovate um, on solutions and try and get something done this year in terms of 2016. I think the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the, the 2020 program has, has been around for about a year now, a year and a half. Um, as of yet, um, there's been some small inroads done, certainly on the access network, but not really near enough as far for me where we need to be. So certainly this year, um, there'll be some short-term initiatives that we are trying to look at uh, to deliver on that um, and to make sure that we can, you know, reach them wider, longer-term goals of, of, of what we described in the, uh, in the slides earlier on. So, whistle stop to it, guys. Um, just a quick update, really, it was more of an awareness session than anything else, just to say that, look, this is something that's happening around the industry. Um, it's starting to pick up legs, certainly within in Virgin Media and indeed across Europe. It's something that I'm very passionate about and, and, and want to try and help to, to fix. Um, and equally, you know, we can't do it on ourselves. We, we certainly need the help of, of vendors, their input, their skills, et cetera, to, uh, to assist us with that. That's it from me, Paul. Shane? Yeah, OK. Um, I'm going to start off with the questions, if I may. Mm -hmm. The uh, I squared our losses within the cable, mm. the voltage drop there. Have you looked at moving to 90 volts AC? And if so, what is the impact and how much does it save, uh, quantify? We, it is on the list to do. Okay. So it is something that um, I think certainly the MSOs in, in the States have done. Um, so there, there will be some data that we can collect from them to, 
to back up you know um, that that proposal. But certainly within in the UK, that's not something that we've done as of yet. Um, but it's certainly something that we will uh, be looking at. I yeah. just wondered if you'd taken a section that's running on 60 volts AC at the moment and done the calculations for 90 volts through it to see. Because to move it to 90 volts AC is going to take almost a Brexit out of the UK to <laughs> alter the official journal of Europe. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's obviously regulatory, uh, regulatory yeah, requirements in place to stop us doing that. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, you know, initially we, we would look at the, uh, the output from the states to give us a view on that and then have a look at that, whether, see, the benefits are worthy of us even trying to go down that route. Um, because certainly from a regulatory perspective and indeed a cost perspective, um, you know, that would all have to obviously be borne into mind. Yeah. I'd say we'd probably have to come out of Europe to do it. <laughs> um, old equipment, so 20-year-old lasers that are taking 25 watts of power. Do you see a, a move to new equipment just for the purpose of reducing the consumption within the head end as such? Is that a, a driver towards the 2020? I think I think it. Um, what it will do for me, Paul, is I I think we can we can tag it from sort of. Um, from, from two sides. So from a power perspective, yes, um, we, we can now look at that and, and make an argument for, for doing that. And equally, um, as we continue to evolve the network and upgrade the network, then um, that needs to happen as well. And I don't think that's happened as well as it should have in the past. But I think now, in terms of you know, combining the, the power angle with the actual <coughs> network capability angle as well, if we pull them two together, then that should make it a lot easier to uh, justify in terms of ROI. And just one more, if I may, before we open it up. A colleague and I, we did a, um, um, a almost a survey of, uh, of equipment, and we were quite shocked to see some of the power supplies in the head-end equipment running at about 50% efficiency. Mm -hmm. It wasn't European um, equipment, it was American equipment. Um, do you see... The Americans, do you see a general move in the efficiency of the power supplies being improved with, head, with regards to the head end equipment? So are you, are you talking about just the, the performance of the actual equipment itself or rather how it's being deployed? Um, it's the, it was the power supply within the laser chassis. So it was, uh, it was about, I think it was about 50 or 60% efficient. <coughs> so quite wasteful. Mm. Do you see... 2020 improving that. Yeah, I think I mean these are all, all all ideas, if you like, in terms of initiatives that that we need to capture. Um, I mean, there's there's one we've just launched last week around optical nodes um, to try and look at how we can, you know, remove um, their dependency on grid power. So all these initiatives, you know, um, fire them into we and we can look at them and and see which ones we can, uh, you know, get the best return on, and and, and we'll definitely, you know. Give them some considered thought. Okay, thank you. Can I pass the floor right at the back, Mr. Callis? Okay. You be very careful. <laughs> Why change the habit of a lifetime, John? You know. Do you believe the M&E department yes. is experienced and have the knowledge to actually decide what power and how to use power in our head ends and hubs? Do I believe? Okay. Well, I, I don't think this is the right forum to discuss the internal workings of Virgin Media, John. So I'll, I'll, well, I'll. I'm talking anybody like BP, anybody, 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 Okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Yes. Red card. <laughs> Next question, please. Some of the work that we've done previously, and can we quantify the, the improvements we've already made? So, programs like uh, taking unused equipment out of 
street cabinets and um, improving efficiencies on equipment? Yeah, I think I think one of the um, one of the biggest challenges we've got is 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 you know, and I said sort of flippantly earlier on in terms of you know, yes, we do understand where our inventory is. Yes, of course we do. I think um, in terms of trying to then capture what we've done in previous upgrades or or, or things like that is is problematic. So um, the whole idea around an outside plant inventory system that covers everything from from an HFC world and and power supplies is is something that I'm you know asking for help on to uh, to deliver because that's one area where where we you know could do better at one is the honest answer please Mike. thank you on your um, slides you show where the, the access costs are in terms of the slice of the cake and how that pyramid pans out have you been able to attribute a cost per kilowatt hour that you might save by taking 1% off the bill to give you an idea of the, of the scale or the opportunity that you have to reduce your costs? Yeah. If so, is that a number you can well, I, I, I wouldn't want to give a number here, but certainly, I mean, in terms of uh, an overall cost, yeah, I mean, you know, the number is so large, you know, 73, 83%, then even a 1% or 2% saving on that number, whatever that is, it's substantial. So it's definitely something that we, uh, we want to get after. Um, I, I mean, I can't go into OPEX numbers here, so I, I don't want to... Well, I'll try. <laughs> Uh, Paul and then the gentleman in front. Oh, right. Paul? I wasn't sure whether there was a microphone coming from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, one of the things. Sarah's run off. <laughs> uh, I'll use my voice. Uh, yeah, one of the things that's coming in on CPE uh, or came in in February is the level six standard on, on uh, CPE power supplies, which mm -hmm. uh, from the old level five standard, which was a minimum 83% to the new standard, which is 89%, and there's no reason why that type of upgrade couldn't be done on network equipment. Uh, <coughs> the cost of doing it is, it probably costs about another 10% on the power supply, because uh, to get the efficiency, you have to make the transformers uh, bigger, but it's something that could okay. be looked at if it's, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you're talking about about an eight to ten percent improvement in efficiency. Mm. It's all about, as you know, everything's all about cost. So it's yeah. Cost versus cost. Cost on buying versus cost. Yeah, and and I think the you know so the again the challenge as we as we move to to one dot two um, and certainly with some of the challenges we've got around higher output amplifiers that we need in the in the network, um, there is going to be a an incremental you know increase in power there. Um, you know, so we, we need to we need to understand what that is, and in terms of how we model that pool, um, anything that we can do to reduce that is is something. Well, the you know, that thing this morning was going on about if we can turn down the power. Mm. Using, uh, using, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, convert less electricity yeah. into our power. Yeah. So there so are certain corner cases. They are. Where that isn't possible. Yeah. So. I, I mean, I was just talking to um, Stuart before uh, about that, and, and I said, uh, you know, we, we need to um, pick pick a, a nodal area and, and just really, as part of the DOCSIS 3.1 characterization, um, use that and the power modeling at the same time just to get a view and start characterizing the network. So I think that is something that we'd certainly look to, to do um, in the not too distant future. Mm. Please, thank you. Yeah, I'll talk out of the as well. Um, how much is this about meeting regulatory and PR requirements rather than real business needs? Um, I think, for me, um, th there's an element of that, of course. You know, from a corporate social responsibility perspective, there's an element of that. But, you know, the numbers themselves are just so big that, you know, to not do anything about them is, is just criminal. So I think, you know, even aside putting the CSR um, flag to one side, you know, there's just a business case there just even to get after those numbers because they are so big, um, it stands alone itself, you know. So you're driving really against, really up towards saving natural electricity and actually better energy and, and costs there rather than, say, uh, playing tricks with, with efficiencies just to make things look good? 
Well, it's not, it's not a case of playing tricks with efficiencies. It, 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 is, it, is saving, it is saving money and reducing your carbon footprint. So, you know, the, the two of them are uh, hand in glove, really. It's a win-win, isn't it? And will that be publicly shared? Yeah, I mean, you know, this, this whole um, programme, certainly from a, a Liberty Global perspective, is, 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 is getting some real um, focus now and, and attention. And, you know, there's lots of activities, initiatives being put in place and, and delivering quite a lot of stuff. Sorry, I think um, certainly with the uh, the uh, VTP solution, then that is that is something that we uh, we, we looked at and we went to Ofcom about. Um, it it certainly um, from an HFC perspective, I think it's you know there's this debate about how much of the network do you have backed up, how much do you not. Um, but you know, it gets to a point where again it becomes a differentiator in terms of you know, I mean we're not in the sort of five nines networks at the moment, but that might not be uh, uh, you know that far away. So again, in terms of battery backup on the network, that's really important. So I think it does start to figure in that discussion now, whereas perhaps in the past it may have not have. <coughs> Gentleman on the right, please. Yeah, so I think um, that, is, that is another area where um, we, we will have to work hand in glove with the DNOs to make sure that, um, you know, we're, we're doing the right thing. And, uh, and one, of, one, of the, one of the key areas is, 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 is unmetered supplies um, and the challenge you've got with them. Of course, as you well know, then th that's a double-edged sword. It, it could work for you and it could work against you. Um, but, you know, let's be clear, you know, we, we need to get to a position where, where we truly understand, you know, what, what that power consumption looks like on the network. And, you know, <clears throat> are there any other means of, of introducing smart meters, doing something different um, that, that can tie into your RCD on your network to give you a, a better facility in terms of, you know, um, not having to truck roll if it trips, things like that. If you can start pulling stuff like that together, then it, it makes a business case stack up, perhaps. Yeah. Just the point you raised for about um, upping the voltage, the line voltage to 90 volts from okay. 60. Um, I would have thought you get having fewer and fewer amplifiers, uh, certainly in cascades, but even just amplifiers, with going you know, from fibre to the node. Now, a node would normally require a local power supply or in second exceptional can be powered back from one, mm -hmm. um, from back one step of the line or something. You don't want to have an awful lot of amplifiers cascaded. Therefore, your, your line currents are, are probably a lot less than they were 20 years ago. And happy days of 20 amplifiers yes. cascade to try to align them. You know, it probably, I would say that is not the most obvious place to start trying to say. Especially as you say, it require Brexit to uh, Yes. Uh, I remember the happy days of. Back in the 60s, there were the Europeans, the maximum peak voltage, maximum voltage, full stop uh, on the system, I think was, was 42 volts. That was the maximum in Holland, in Belgium. Yes. It was 42 volts. Now, that's not much of a. I think we, we, the, our, our, the line voltage we applied was 36. And um, I think I gave you a. <laughs> That's a, a worthy point. I was just wondering with the the Americans using 90 volts, just what they save with that. And as I... That's nearly men's voltage, isn't it? Well, that's what I said to somebody else. I wouldn't mind witness testing the 90 volt testing. So. <laughs> Yes. 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 You're quite correct. I remember my first 60 volts AC, my spanner went flying. Yes. 
You only do it once. Any more questions, please? Uh, I'm going to close the meeting and can ask Mike to finish off, if it would be so kind. I would say appreciation to Gary. Okay, thank you. Thank you.